this to me, it was with the heartfelt desire to share it with his friends and relatives. After reading his letter, I knew that John was not the only one who desired to reach out to loved ones with a message of both warning, hope, and clear instructions to all those who will be left on the earth when the Lord comes to collect his bride, the church. John has a message to all of your friends and relatives who might think the idea that the rapture is the craziest thing they ever heard, and they may dismiss it as fantasy. But, when it actually happens, your friends and relatives will be looking for answers, and this video might just be the lifeline they need, as the world is about to turn upside down, and the Church of Jesus Christ is about to disappear. Please take the time to carefully listen to this video, and after that, please pass it along. Greetings. The purpose of this recording is to give you valuable information if you've been left behind after the event Christians call the Rapture. For reference, this recording is being made in April of 2024 in anticipation of those who have been left behind and need truthful and accurate direction and guidance regarding the terrible times ahead. Please listen to this video in its entirety, as in it I will, to the best of my ability, give you critical information and guidance, as well as a very dire warning. I'm going to have to speculate as to how much you know about Bible prophecy and events but the rapture is the term used to describe Jesus' removal of his church of true believers from the earth prior to the final seven-year period known as the Great Tribulation, which has or will soon begin after the rapture has occurred. The rapture is not to be confused with the second coming of Jesus. Jesus' second coming will occur at the end of the Great Tribulation, and it won't be secret in any way or to anyone. The rapture, on the other hand, is a catching away of all true believers, not just anyone who attends church. Many people who attend church may still be here after the rapture, although anyone left behind were not taken because they were not truly believers at the time it occurred. I'm only able to guess at what particular circumstances may be occurring, although I can explain many prophetic events that will be happening as they are foretold in Scripture. The rapture is the signature event that lets you know the world has changed. The age of grace you are living in, known as the church age, is over. The world you're about to be living in is like the world that existed before the church was created on Pentecost in the first century AD. Can you still be saved? Can you still spend eternity in heaven? Well, the answer is absolutely yes. You have entered the seven-year period of time called the 70th week of Daniel and the time of Jacob's trouble. The term week is used to describe this seven-year period, much like the term decade is used to describe a 10-year span of time. It is also called the Great Tribulation and for good reason. The Lord is still saving people and God's word has a name for those he is redeeming out of this terrible time. They're called Tribulation Saints, and as you will learn, they are a group so large that no man can number them. There is no sugarcoating the fact that there are perilous times ahead, but please take heart because God has a surprising reward awaiting those that trust Him, and as I will explain a little later in this video. This information will help you navigate the coming days as well as give you an understanding of the world events as they quickly unfold. There are millions of people missing worldwide, and you're no doubt being told a lie as to who took them and where they are. Well, I can answer those questions for you. The church has been gathered by Jesus, and you are not taken. You may be someone that believed that you are basically a good person that didn't feel you needed to be saved by Jesus, or perhaps you were turned off by religion and some of the hypocritical so-called Christians or TV preachers that seem to only be interested in money and power. Regardless of your reason, the fact is that not one human that has ever lived is or was good enough to enter heaven on their own accord. Every single one of us deserves God's wrath. The only difference between those left behind and those caught up is that one group trusted Jesus and his worthiness alone, and those left behind didn't. It's really that simple. If we could get there on our own, 
Then Jesus suffering the humiliation, the false accusations, beatings, scourging, mocking, and crucifixion would not have been necessary. He prayed the night of his betrayal, asking his heavenly Father if there was any other way to accomplish the salvation of mankind without the suffering of the cross. But there was no other way. And Jesus, well actually, Yeshua is his true name, which means salvation. Yeshua willingly laid down his life for us. One of his titles is The Way, because there is no other way. Every single person that is now missing knew this and accepted his offer of salvation and repented. They represent the true church. My goal with this video is to give you what you need to be secure in your eternal future, which is dangerously near. The Bible warned that this seven-year period of time would be unlike any other, full of lies and deception, and you are now living in it. I can confidently state to you that the world you knew is over and the world you are now experiencing is passing away. From this point forward, there is nothing good or of any value left on earth. Nothing worth striving for, no advancements, prestige or comfort or hopes worth spending any energy trying to achieve. All that matters is the condition of your soul and the souls of millions of people that may overcome the trials ahead with God's help in order to become the one and only thing you should put any effort into achieving. And that is the title of Tribulation Saint. Will you be one of them? You may be wondering how this can happen. It all seems so hopeless and out of reach, and you're right. That is exactly what you should be thinking as you can only survive this perilous journey ahead with supernatural assistance that I'm here to tell you is available. I will give you practical advice as to what steps you need to take right now to secure the only outcome worth the effort, and that is being heaven's promise. The information here is the truth. Please listen and heed the warnings as we continue. I will start with what is foretold in Scripture. It is extremely important that you find a Bible so that you can understand and read these references for yourself. Now, let me share what is about to happen, or is happening. The raptures occurred, and you're probably curious what that was all about. Well, find a Bible as quickly as you can and read 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, which says, Quote, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. The news is probably telling everyone that those missing were taken away by ETs to allow for the world to pursue peace and one world order, which they claim would be unattainable with the fundamentalist believers in the way. They may say we have been removed so as to undergo re-education that will allow for us to be returned when that process is complete to re-enter society as model citizens when returned. May I interject here that any reference to aliens or ETs is part of a big lie being set up to deceive you. You may witness beings of some sort parading on the news, but they are demons full of lies. So beware. A man and his assistant, who are named in scripture as the beast and the false prophet, also known as the Antichrist, may already be making statements and gaining huge followings. This man will have answers to many issues and will be loved and admired by many. His ability to solve problems and provide answers to complex world issues will sway many to follow him. His rise to power was withheld by his restraining influence of the true church who are filled with the Holy Spirit. That restraint has now been removed. To be very clear, however, the Holy Spirit that indwelt true believers has been removed, but God the Holy Spirit is still active. He is the witness to truth and the power that will energize those that the Lord calls the tribulation saints. As it says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7, quote, For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. The beast's supernatural abilities are given to him by Satan himself, who caused all the problems he now has solutions to. 
This charismatic man will be seemingly assassinated at some point, and the whole world will mourn for him, only to find shortly thereafter that he was brought back to life somehow, in some supernatural manner. Here's a scripture describing these things from Revelation chapter 13, verses 3 through 9. Quote, And I saw one of his heads as if it had been slain, and his fatal wound was healed. And the whole world was amazed and followed after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon because he gave his authority to the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast, and who is able to wage war with him? And there was given to him a mouth speaking arrogant words and blasphemies, and authority to act for forty-two months was given him, and he opened his mouth in blasphemies against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, that is, those who dwell in heaven. And it was given to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and authority over every tribe and nation was given to him. And all who dwell on the earth will worship him, everyone whose name has not been written from the foundation of the world in the book of life of the Lamb who has been slain. If anyone has an ear, let them hear. Scripture describes this man as having lasting damage from this fatal wound, as his right eye will be blind and his right hand withered, but it won't stop him from gaining worldwide acceptance and power. Listen to the prophecy of Zechariah 11:17, which says, quote, Woe to the worthless shepherd who leaves the flock. A sword will be on his arm and on his right eye. His arm will be totally withered and his right eye will be blind. Regarding this man, there will even be an image of him, perhaps an AI model or some other technology, uh, that everyone will be required to worship. It will be set up by his assistant, who is known as the false prophet. John describes this false prophet as the second beast. His rise to power is described in Revelation chapter 13, verse 11, which reads, quote, And I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke as a dragon. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence, and he makes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose fatal wound was healed. And he performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down out of heaven to the earth in the presence of men, and he deceives those who dwell on the earth because of the signs which it was given him to perform in the presence of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who had the wound of the sword and has come to life. And there was given to him to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast might even speak and cause as many as do not worship the image of the beast to be killed. During the time the Antichrist and the false prophet rise to power, there will be two men in Jerusalem that will be teaching and warning people about this charismatic leader and his plans, as well as giving a salvation message. They will be vehemently hated by the media and there will be attempts to silence them which will be thwarted by God's supernatural protection. Please do not be swayed by the world's hatred for these two prophets, as they have been sent by God, and every word they utter will be the absolute truth. This is a source of information that you should heed. You can read about this in Revelation chapter 11, verses 3 through 13, where it says, quote, and I will grant authority to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for twelve hundred and sixty days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. And if anyone desires to harm them, fire proceeds out of their mouth and devours their enemies. And if anyone would desire to harm them, in this manner he must be killed. These have the power to shut up the sky in order that rain may not fall during the days of their prophesying. And they have power over the waters to turn them into blood and to smite the earth with every plague as often as they desire. And when they have finished their testimony, the beast that comes up out of the abyss will make war with them and overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which mystically is called Sodom and Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified. And those from the peoples and tribes and tongues and nations will look at their dead bodies for three days and a half and will not permit their dead bodies to be laid in a tomb. And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them and make merry 
and they will send gifts to one another, because these two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth. And after the three days and a half, the breath of life from God came into them, and they stood on their feet, and great fear fell upon those who were beholding them. And they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here. And they went up into heaven in the cloud, and their enemies beheld them. As you can see, out of an abundance of love, the Lord is still hard at work trying to warn and convince those left behind to repent and seek salvation. At the end of the first 1,260 days, or three and a half years, the world leader we have been talking about, the one the Bible calls the beast, will require everyone on earth to take some sort of a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. It is very important that you know exactly when this is going to happen. Counting from the signing of the peace treaty with Israel and going forward exactly 1,260 days puts you at the exact moment when you will witness the following scripture being fulfilled before your eyes. Listen carefully to Revelation chapter 13 verses 16 and 17. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here's wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. This mark will be permanent, and will identify the person with the beast, as well as Satan, forever. It will alter the person in a permanent way, perhaps changing their DNA. At this point, you will be making a decision that will determine your eternal destiny. The pressure to take the mark will be almost overwhelming, as without it, you will not be able to buy anything or sell anything. There will most likely be huge penalties for anyone aiding those who don't have the mark of the beast, so help will be unlikely for those refusing to take it. What will you do if you can't purchase food? What will your family do? Your every instinct will be to do whatever it takes to survive. If you're unable to purchase food and other necessities, you are certain to suffer the gnawing pains of hunger and the emotional stress of not being able to provide for those you love. There may be even rewards offered to those who turn people in or who are unwilling to take the mark. I want to interject something here regarding the Antichrist and his requirement that you receive his mark in order to buy or sell, and I can't stress this enough. You must not take that mark. If you take that mark, you are doomed for all eternity. There will be no hope for salvation, and you will spend eternity in the lake of fire with the Antichrist and all those who reject Yeshua. Once you take it, you can't go back. I implore you to understand this. Please, no matter how tempted you are by trickery, by lies or deception or any form of coercion or even hunger, do not take that mark. In the middle of this crisis, will you consider the cost of losing your own soul? Based on an eternal perspective, the choice is simple. Do not take the mark of the beast, as even the angels God sends proclaim and warn. One of the primary purposes of the seven-year tribulation from God's perspective is to give the Jews one last opportunity to repent. If you are not Jewish, you may wonder what this has to do with you. Well, the answer is a lot. Let me help you understand how important this is. The Jews will be deceived and will accept this man, the Bible calls the beast, as their long-awaited Messiah, as they rejected their true Messiah, Yeshua, almost 2,000 years ago. Listen to what Yeshua says about this man the scriptures call the beast, or the Antichrist, as recorded in the Gospel of John, chapter 5, verse 43, quote, I have come in my Father's name, and you do not receive me. If another shall come in his own name, you will receive him. The tribulation is decreed as a judgment upon Israel as well as those who reject Yeshua. It is allowed by God to discipline his chosen people. Israel is precious to God and his will is for them to be saved, and indeed a remnant will be. 
Satan knows God's love for the Jews, driven by his hatred for God and anything God loves, he's attempted numerous times throughout history to destroy them. If God loves the people of Israel, how do you think he wants us who are not Jews to treat them? Well, the answer is that we are to love whom God loves. We're told both to love them and not persecute them. The Antichrist will surely seek to destroy the Jews. To stand against the Jews is to stand with the Antichrist as well as Satan. Don't be deceived into joining the whole world in its hatred for the Jews. This man of sin called the Antichrist will deceitfully enforce a peace treaty that will allow the Jews to rebuild and worship in their temple for the first time in over 1900 years, as it says in Daniel 9 verse 27. Quote, and he will make a firm covenant with the many for one week, but in the middle of the week he will put a stop to sacrifice and grain offering, and on the wing of abominations will come one who makes desolate, even until a complete destruction, one that is decreed, is poured out on the one who makes desolate. Once again, the reference to one week represents a seven-year period. The Jews will be elated until this leader enters the temple at the midpoint of the seven years and will proclaim that he is God and will demand worship. It's stated in Matthew 24 verses 15 through 18 by Yeshua, quote, Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, which was spoken of through Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down to get the things out that are in his house. And let him who is in the field not turn back to get his cloak. Judgments come so swiftly that the sense of urgency is seen here telling them to flee immediately. Many Jews at this time will realize this man is evil and will flee to save themselves. The entire world will be required to worship him and worship his image, as told in Revelation 13, verse 15. Anyone that will not worship him and his image will be executed. In order to navigate and understand what is coming next, as these events will unfold in ways that you need to be aware of, I, once again, highly encourage you to find a Bible, preferably a smaller one if you can, so that it will be easier to hide as they will most likely deceive everyone into believing that the Bible is a book full of hate and lies. They're likely to gather them all up and then ban them, so make it illegal to have one. There will be a lie as to who God is and who created mankind and how. Perhaps aliens will make claims about man's beginnings. There will be a lie upon lie upon lie that will be supernatural in nature. And without the protection of the Holy Spirit, you will be deceived, believe the lies, and most likely perish. So keep listening so you can find out how to be protected from this. This is a very rough overview of things that will happen in the next seven years. The Antichrist and the false prophet and all those who are aligned with them will use CGI, Holographic images, facial recognition, and technology that we don't even know about at this point to deceive and mislead the world. There may even be an image or actual person proclaiming to be Jesus or the Christ. Yeshua himself warned of this in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 5. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, and will mislead many. You won't be able to trust anything you see or hear. It will be a time unmatched in its horror, as the Bible says that never in history nor ever again will there be such a deception and tribulation. Yeshua said in Matthew 24, 21, quote, For then there will be a great tribulation such has not occurred since the beginning of the world until now, nor ever shall. Keep in mind that most everything you hear is at the very least a manipulation and most likely an outright lie. The first three and a half years will be relatively peaceful as the world is prepared for overwhelming destruction through lies and false promises. This is all bad news, but would you be surprised to learn that there is also absolutely fantastic news for you? Information that I have saved for the last part of this recording. So think about this. God has allowed you to witness an event that has been foretold for almost 2,000 years. Of course, I'm talking about the rapture of the believers in Yeshua. 
Well, no, you weren't taken, but perhaps a husband, a wife, children, or others you know are missing. The true Christians you may have known are gone. Are you wondering if there is still a way for you to join them? Well, perhaps you were a skeptic, but now you have seen the fulfillment of the prophetic event with your own eyes, and this should validate the rest of the scriptures for you. Isn't it time that you consider God's word trustworthy and true? And isn't it time for you to put aside your skepticism and doubt? And isn't it time for you to repent and humbly pray? You must not doubt or fear as God will hear you. If you've never prayed before or you don't know what to say, here's an example that may give you guidance. Remember that this must be a prayer from your heart, so you can put it in your own words if you prefer, trusting that God hears you, and on the authority of His Word, He does. Lord, please hear my prayer. I know now that I can come before you in faith and ask for your help and guidance. I didn't understand your offer of salvation before, and now that I see the events from your prophetic Word unfolding, I've repented of my unbelief. I believe. I ask for you to forgive me. I need you, Yeshua. I need your help. I believe that you died for me to take away my sins. I now understand that the salvation you bring is a free gift only you are qualified to give, not earned by any good works that we do. I want to spend eternity with you, and I realize it's your goodness and righteousness, not mine, that I trust in. Please help me and guide me and fill me with the Holy Spirit to strengthen me and make me brave and bold for you. In Yeshua's name I pray. Once you have a Bible, I would suggest you start reading the last book, which is the book of Revelation. Chapter 4, verse 1 is representative of the rapture that just happened. And don't worry if you have trouble understanding the words. Remember that it was written by a man that was shown modern-day warfare and technology that he had never seen. For instance, missiles, bombs, tanks, helicopters, and nukes might be described as fire and brimstone, locusts whose wings beat the air, and seeing the clouds rolled away as a scroll. He could only describe them in his known terms as a man living in the first century who only knew of swords, spears, and chariots. Next, I'd suggest reading the Gospel of John to better acquaint yourself with who Yeshua is. While reading, you may notice that the religious Pharisees are the ones that worked tirelessly to have Yeshua killed. Religion is and always has been man's design to define God as he sees fit and is a futile attempt at pleasing him. Even now, in the midst of God's wrath, he desires repentance and faith, as without these two realities in your life, it is impossible to please God. Even in these dark days so full of hopelessness and tragedy, God still desires a relationship with you. Yeshua died willingly at any time. He could have called an army of angels to his rescue. God is righteous, holy, and just. Our disobedience had to be paid for, and so Yeshua willingly did so on our behalf. He took our sin, but was himself sinless, so he destroyed death and he rose again from the grave. Now, death is no longer to be feared, as anyone who is a true believer in Yeshua is immediately in the Lord's presence when they die. It's a priceless gift given to those who believe, ask, and repent. Every disciple of Yeshua but John was martyred for their insistence that Yeshua was Lord. Why would they stand up for a lie, even to death? The answer is that this life is described as a fading flower or a puff of smoke that appears for a moment in time and then it's gone. This is a great opportunity to compare our short time as pilgrims on this earth to eternity. The world is on the brink of complete annihilation. There are judgments coming that will make the world a wasteland. There will be horrors unleashed upon nature that will decimate the entire earth. In Revelation 8, there are seven trumpet judgments that start with one-third of all trees being burned, as well as all the green grass. One-third of all people on earth are killed. Currently, that would be just short of three billion people. In Revelation chapter 16, there are seven bowl judgments. In these judgments, all life in the oceans die. The rivers turn to blood. 
The sun changes and begins to scorch and burn men. I could say here, much like the pitch man on the infomercial claims, but wait, there's more. And unfortunately, there is. Read Revelation chapter 8 and Revelation chapter 16 for yourself. The point I'm making is to confirm the statement I made earlier that the world is over, that nothing on earth can compare with that which is in heaven. The temporal is finished, and certainly not worth mourning or longing for. It's time to stand firm in your faith, even to death. Here are some more scriptures for you to read that further emphasize this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 7 and 8. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We're of good courage, I say, and prefer rather to be absent from the body and to be at home with the Lord. Romans chapter 8, verse 18, quote, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. And later in that same chapter, verses 37 through 39 says, But in all these things we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I told you that I had good news. You probably find that hard to believe after all this gloom and doom. But just as we who are in Christ were taken away before these horrors began, you can be a part of a very unique and very special group. First, I'm hoping and certainly praying that you see the futility of unbelief. God is real. His word is faithful, true, and sure. He literally suffered a horrid death to redeem you. It's time to believe this. It's time to think past this very short time we all have on earth and think about eternity. You can be assured of your place in heaven. It's a promise from the one who created you as well as the one who offers salvation and forgiveness of sin. I challenge you to look at the beauty of creation. Look at the majestic mountains, the white sand beaches with turquoise water and palm trees, the lush green forests, as well as the abundant and diverse life throughout. The one who literally imagined and then created all this wants you to live with him in his kingdom. Can you imagine how incredible and awesome it is there? Well, even in your most vivid imagination, you can't, because 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 says so. Listen to this, quote, But as it is written, things which eye has not seen and ear has not heard and which have not entered the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him. And Yeshua's promise comes to mind from the book of John, chapter 14, verses 2 and 3, quote, in my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. With the heartache that is coming, life on earth will be nothing but miserable, not to mention hazardous to your eternal destiny as you constantly dodge the lies and deceit that will be rampant, attempting to kidnap your very soul. There is widespread destruction coming, as well as wars, plagues, famines, and other disasters. Your chance of survival is quite small. When the rapture happened, we were changed in an instant, caught up into heaven. When you die, you will just as instantly end up in one of two places, a place so wonderful you literally have no capacity to have imagined it, or a place so horrible no nightmare or horror movie could come close to describing it. Your destiny will be sealed for all eternity the moment you die any regrets will be too late there's no second chances once this life ends the bible describes a scene at the judgment where there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth as sheer horror and agonizing regret overwhelm those that rejected salvation and therefore will spend eternity in the lake of fire 
Will you be a saint that comes out of the tribulation? Will you be rewarded with a martyr's crown? Will you join a host so large that the word of God says no man can number it? A host that are promised a special place in heaven? This isn't speculation or hopeful wishes. This is a promise you can bet your life as well as your eternity on as it is contained in the word of God written by the one who cannot lie. Listen with your heart tuned to the amazing love and mercy of God that even now desires to rescue you from the eternal consequences of the wrath that is now being poured out on the earth. Hear the Lord's heartbeat of compassion and love for you as you read Revelation chapter 6 verse 9, quote, I saw underneath the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and because of the testimony which they had maintained. And they cried out with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, wilt thou refrain from judging and avenging our blood on those who dwell on the earth? And there was given to each of them a white robe, and they were told that they should rest for a little while longer until the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who were to be killed, even as they had been, should be completed also. This is the first scripture of the martyrs in Revelation. The next one is found in Revelation 7, verse 9, where it says, quote, After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could count from every nation, and all tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes and palm branches were in their hands. And they cry out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying to me, These who are clothed in the white robes, who are they and from where have they come? And I said to him, my Lord, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones that come out of the great tribulation, and they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God, and they serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne shall spread his tabernacle over them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst no more, neither shall the sun beat down on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb... In the center of the throne shall be their shepherd and shall guide them to springs of the water of life and God shall wipe away every tear from their eyes. Clearly, the tribulation saints are the completion of those martyred through history. Many have suffered horrid deaths for God and all will be greatly rewarded as seen in the scriptures of Revelation. Here's a promise found in Revelation chapter 14 verse 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, for their deeds follow with them. Revelation chapter 15 verse 2 goes on to say, And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mixed with fire, and those who had come off victorious from the beast and from his image and from the number of his name.